Hello and welcome to a quick guide on how to install Stepmania, some important settings, and how to get started playing. To get started, you're going to want to come to stepmania.com slash download. However, these are not the most up-to-date version, so instead I'm going to come over to News, scroll down a little bit to where it says Visit its release page on GitHub. Scroll all the way down on that page. In here you can get the latest version, and by latest, I mean 2018. Come on guys, really? So we have Windows installer, we have Mac installer, and below that we have for Linux. I've already gone ahead and downloaded this Windows installer myself. So here's the installer that I've already downloaded. Once you go ahead and run that, it's going to ask you where you'd like to install the game to. On Windows, the default is under your C drive and then a new folder called Games. If you choose to install Stepmania to a folder in Windows that requires admin permissions, you might need to go into Program, locate the Stepmania EXE, go down to Properties, Compatibility, and check off the run this program as an administrator. If you're having any issues trying to create a profile or issues with it saving, I would definitely set this option up. Before we get started, there's one optional thing you can do. By default, Stepmania saves all of your high scores and data to the app data folder instead of into this games folder. If you'd like it to save locally into this folder, you'll have to create a new text document and then go ahead and rename that to portable.ini. This will force the game to save all of its settings and features locally into the step menu folder instead of putting it elsewhere. This makes it easy to copy the game entirely for backups or if you want to put it on an external drive to bring somewhere. If you're not able to see the extension on Windows to change the .txt to .ini, all you have to do is come up to the top under view and then check off the box that says file name extensions. Once you have this file, all you need to do is take it and put it into the main Stepmania folder, and this will tell the game that you want it to be a portable version and to save locally into your data folder. To add songs into the game, it's a fairly easy process. All you need to do is open up the songs folder. Inside of the songs folder, you'll need another folder to act as a group for your songs. This way you can separate them out and not have everything together in one. By default, Stepmania already has a folder with three songs inside of it called Stepmania 5. Once you open up a group folder, this is where you would put the individual song folders. So you'll see if I open up the first one called Going Under, inside of this folder has all the files for the song. In the description below the video, I'm going to leave quite a few links to where you can find new songs to add into Stepmania. The last thing to do before we open up the game is to decide how you want your keyboard layout. One of the most common methods is called index, usually done on the arrow keys, where you would use your index finger from each hand to hit the keys. This is going to be the closest way to recreating the actual feeling of playing Dance Dance Revolution or similar dance games. This is how I play the majority of the time, however I do not recommend playing like this. Once you get to high difficulty songs, it becomes very hard to hit the notes fast enough to keep up. The most popular way to play on keyboard, and what I would recommend starting with, is called Split. This utilizes your index finger and middle finger from each hand. In this example, we have the keys QW on the left and OP on the right. Having the keys split apart like this keeps your fingers from getting too cramped and bunched up together. It also helps me separate them in my mind as for which hand is hitting what key. If you'd like to have your hands at a more natural angle, or if you play the keyboard fairly close to your body, you can also play Split Concave, where the keys are basically twisted to allow your hands to be at an angle. In this example, we have the E, D, and L, P keys being used. And this example is what I personally use when I play Split, using W, D, and KO. This lets me keep my left hand at a bit more of an angle and those fingers spread out compared to on the right. There's no right way to set up your keyboard layout. You'll have to mess around and see what feels best and works for you. If you didn't set a shortcut to launch the game, you can get there from going into Stepmania, Program, and then launching the EXE. 
From here, there's a couple options that you're gonna wanna set up before we start playing. So I'm gonna go hit the down arrow to go to options and then the enter key. I prefer to play in full screen, so I'm gonna go ahead and get that set up first by going down to graphics and sound options, and then changing it from window to full screen. By hitting enter on an option, you can jump down to the bottom where it says exit, and then hit enter again. The next thing to do under options is to come down to profiles and create a profile. This will allow you to save all of your high scores and preferences to that profile. For this example, I'm just going to use the default name. Under config key slash joy mappings, this is where you can change your keyboard controls or set up a dance pad to use. Under input options, I would recommend calibrating your audio sync. This way, if your audio is slightly out of sync with what you're seeing on the screen, it will adjust it for that. Otherwise, on some machines, due to the audio not being in sync with what you're seeing, by the time you see the notes cross the receptors, the song could either have already played the beat that it was synced to, or not even have played that beat yet. Next, I'm going to go down to display options, followed by UI options. In here we have the option to center when you're playing single player. By default, Step Mania has the notes appearing on the left hand side of the screen. Changing this option to on will instead put those notes in the center of the screen. This is mostly personal preference. In order to skip the splash screens at startup, you can come down to caution and instructions and turn those off. Towards the bottom, under advanced options, we have the ability to change your default fail type. I would recommend either setting this to end of song or off. This way, if you're struggling on a new song or just learning how to play the game, missing a bunch of notes in a row won't immediately end the song. Instead, you can continue playing to see what comes next and to keep practicing. Once you're done looking through the settings, we can finally get started playing. So by hitting game start, you'll be able to choose the game type that you want. To keep the length of the tutorial down, I'm just going to select normal and leave a link in the description that describes what the other modes do. Once you're on the song selection screen, you can hit right to go down and left to go up. Once you're on a song, you can double tap up to go up a difficulty and double tap down to go down a difficulty. To start playing the song, you can hit enter and then hit enter again to the options menu. As long as you've created a profile, any settings that you change in this screen will be saved for all of your songs in future sessions. The most important modifier here is the speed modifier, which determines how fast the notes scroll across the screen. By default, it starts on X mod, which is not really a preferred way of playing. The next mod of 1 will scroll the notes depending on the BPM of the song. At high difficulties with large amount of notes and a slow BPM, these notes are often squished together, making it very hard to read. By leaving it on X mod, you are also subjected to any slowdowns, pauses, or stops in the song. If you'd rather have your notes come in at a constant speed and what most people prefer to play at, you can set it to C mod or constant mod. I would recommend starting with a C mod of either 300 or 400, and then go up and down from there, depending if the notes are too fast for you to read and react to on time, or if they're too slow. By using CMOD, the notes will never change the speed that they're scrolling across the screen. The last alternative, which I don't recommend either, is MMOD or Maxima Mod. This is basically a updated version of XMOD. This allows you to set the maximum speed that you'd like the notes to scroll across the screen, and once the fastest notes are capped at that speed, the rest will automatically be adjusted around that. I'm now going to show you two examples to see the differences between them, starting with an X mod of 0.5 to exaggerate and show a slow song with a bunch of notes, followed by what I usually play on, which is a C mod 500. So this is with an X mod of 0.5. As you can see, the notes are very dense and grouped up together, making it very hard to read what note even comes next in the stream. This is the same song with a C mod of 500. As you can see, by increasing the speed of the notes, as long as you're able to read and keep up with them, 
makes it much easier to see which note comes next as the spacing is increased. It's worth mentioning that as you get to really high C mod levels, if you're at 800 or above, some players prefer to play on distant for your perspective. Instead of the notes coming in directly at a top-down view, distant tilts your perspective, making it kind of easier to read them. If there's a song that you like playing and you've played it so much that you practically have it memorized, using the option mirror will essentially mirror all of the notes making the song feel fresh again as everything has been reversed. Under Remove is where you can customize the songs most to how you prefer to play. You have options such as turning off jumps, meaning that you'll never have notes where you need to hit two at once. Disabling hands removes notes that you have to hit three at once. Putting on no quads means you never have to hit all four notes at once. No rolls will remove roll notes, where you have to repeatedly hit the same key until it ends. Lifts are notes that work the opposite of what you're used to. Instead of being judged on when you press the key, it judges you on when you remove or lift your finger off of the key. Unlike most music rhythm games, Step Mania has the notes flowing from the bottom of the screen up to the top of the screen. If you'd rather have them flow from the top to the bottom, like most games, you can turn on the reverse option under scroll. Mines are also a feature that is mostly unique to Step Mania. Most players prefer to play with mines off. Mines are uniquely shaped notes that must be avoided and not hit, otherwise if you hit them they will damage your life bar and break your combo. On some newer songs, some charters have decided to add in attack sections on the songs. These are sections that will apply various effects to the notes of the note receptors, such as making them suddenly scroll in reverse, blinking in and out, or spitting in place. If you'd prefer to play without all the additional effects on, you can set a text off. And once you're done looking through all of the song options and messing with those, you can hit exit to begin playing your song. My last suggestion would be for when you're starting out and adding new songs into Step Mania to come to the In The Groove Pax release spreadsheet, which as mentioned prior is going to be linked in the description of the video. There's a section labeled Beginner Packs. All the packs in this list have been charted with multiple difficulties and are designed to be beginner friendly. This now wraps up the end of my tutorial, thanks for watching.